I'm setting myself up for a couple big build projects and a major military offensive, or maybe defense, depending on how it goes. But to get there, I need the best functioning mobile printer I can get. So in this episode, I make four upgrades to this airtight control room and bring its utility up to the next level. So, I know I have a printer and drone obsession at the moment, but I'm embracing it, and I've been really enjoying tinkering, improving, redesigning, and exploring what's possible in space engineers. This first upgrade was an obvious one for me, and one that I knew I'd want to change as soon as I made it. But I wanted to get something working first, then improve it. This air vent keeps the control room pressurized, at a warm temperature, and oxygenated, but I hate its placement. Not only does it seem a bit intrusive into the room space, but when I sit down in the control chair, it actually blocks part of the view I have out to the left. So this whole setup had to move out of the way. I decided a floor vent would be the best setup. So after a bit of grinding and conveyor tubing routing, I wound up with a recessed floor vent. Now, ideally, I'd like to have it flush with the floor. And I thought maybe I could add a graded window or a catwalk or something that would allow the air to pass through and provide pretty much an even looking floor. But I couldn't. I think it's because even though it's an empty voxel space above the floor, the block didn't have another block next to it that it could attach to. Which is a shame, because it really would have finished off the look, as well as not having a little half hole to fall into. But this first upgrade definitely gave me a better view out the window, and a better aesthetic. With the air vent thing complete, it was time to move on to the next, more complicated task. I loved the higher elevation of this whole control room concept, but potentially this room might be in the way of a rotating build in my printer. Maybe not, and I could probably lift the projection up a block to clear over the top of the room, but I think my large mining ship would probably be difficult to manage. So a modification was in order. Now I toyed with several setups. I wanted to stay pretty tight within the constraints of my designated build area, avoid clang, and give as much general improvement as possible. So what I came up with was a simple set of double hinges. One hinge attached to the deck of my mothership, another to the underside of my control room and connected with a conveyor tube. Very simple and compact. The one little funny thing that happened was that when I added the conveyor tube, it only attached to one side. I guess it's kind of impossible to get the alignment of the hinges just perfect, so a tube would attach to both sides, but if something like that happens to you, it's easily rectified. Just grind off the hinge head on one side attach the hinge head, or hinge part as it's also called, directly to the conveyor tube, then with the hinge head in close proximity to the hinge, select the attach function on the hinge and connect the two parts together. When I reconfigured the air vent, I also used a connector on it with a matching connector on the deck of the mothership. This way, I could disconnect the connector and activate the hinges to lift and rotate the control room out of the way. This setup moves the control room a full four blocks back, and if I want, I can stop the hinges halfway so the room is at its top height and get a higher view of whatever I'm welding up on my printer. I even experimented at one point with a rotor underneath the lower hinge so when the control room was at the top of the arc, I could spin the whole control room and get a 360 degree view of everything. I may mess with this idea some more, but for now, it didn't work. The added height of the rotor didn't let my control room sit all the way down on the deck of the mothership, and also interfered with the connector reliably connecting. I will say, without the rotor, I really like how the whole control room sits down flush on the deck you really would have no idea it's a completely separate and movable piece. So I couldn't give that up. It looks too good. I mean, you could even hide a secret entrance to a base under there. 
But in that rotor process, I also realized the whole control room can be disconnected, moved, and reattached elsewhere. Kind of gets you thinking, doesn't it? But moving on. The next upgrade was to the actual controls. The horizontal movement of the welders is really the primary thing I want to move with immediate response and precision. The way I have it set up now isn't terrible. I have one button to turn the movement on and off and another that reverses the direction. It works pretty well to be able to do something like move the welders in, turn off the movement, then as the projection spins, hit the reverse, then turn it back on to move it out. It works okay, but it's not perfect and not completely intuitive. And several times I mentally lost track of whether the last movement was one that was moving it in or moving it out, banged the welders, and in general, it just didn't feel like a natural control. So I fixed that. I added two timer blocks on the base of the control room and set two simple actions. When one timer is activated, it toggles the pistons on and off. At the same time, it makes the piston extend. On the other timer block, it does the exact same thing, but retracts the piston. What this does is it allows me to tap the extend button on the left to move and nudge the welder out to the left, then tap the right button to move and nudge things back to the right. It just felt a lot more natural and intuitive to have the number one key on the left always moving things to the left and the number two key on the right always moving things to the right. With that upgrade done, there was one last and biggest upgrade of all. I wanted to get some useful information on my control station's display panels. In a previous episode, I made a video about using programmable blocks and loading scripts and used an incredibly handy script package exampled in that video called Automated LCDs. Now this script package provides a wealth of usable information you can display on LCD panels, including these little control station screens. I already have the script loaded into a programmable block on the mothership and have that script set so it's accessible and can read information across attached subgrids. From here, you only need to do two things. I open my control station control panel and add to the end of the control station's name, bracket, LCD, close bracket, then go to the custom data and enter in the data and format I want displayed on each of the five display screens. This looks more complicated than it is, but the creator of the script has created a pretty comprehensive user guide on what data can be displayed and which of these little commands you need to use to display it with some formatting options. The information I chose is to first have on the main screen in front a list of damaged or incomplete blocks. This will tell me if some things got missed or might be needing some components. In a little test, you can see it's telling me about a couple blocks that still need some work on my welder drum. To the left, I have a list of components in stock and can see if something I might need is getting low or at zero. And I can just initiate the production of more components right from my control station. I don't even need to get up. All the way to the left is a tiny little display. So I just have a rudimentary reading of the room's air pressure, and my welder drone's battery. Back over to the right, I've got a nice little display of my welder, pistons, and projector rotations. It just tells me if they are on or off, but you can't really tell if a piston is on or off and that sort of thing, so it helps. And besides, it's a really nice readout. Lastly, on the far right, I have a list of ores and how many ingots are available in storage. I might want different information later, but for the primary purpose of this ship's printer control room, I think this information will be useful. And I'll also add that having these technical readouts and seeing things like the blocks being constructed on the center panel while it's being constructed is just really, really cool. This control room with its fully pressurized atmosphere and powered chair 
will allow me to control both the printer and all my drones for extended periods of time without having to worry about oxygen or power while in remote operation of a drone. I'm really glad I kept improving with this control room. And it's one of the great things I'm liking about space engineers. You're always able to create, improve, and evolve your projects. I've got mothership additions to make, a drone army to build, space pirates to fight, and a lot more to come you might miss if you forget to like and subscribe. Take care, and I'll see you in the next episode.